Welcome back. In this video, we're going to prove more special quadrilaterals. So rewinding the clock a little bit, we talked about the properties of quadrilaterals. And then in the most recent video, we proved a parallelogram. And we, in that video, we talked about five different ways of proving a parallelogram. You only need one to do it. And you don't need to prove all the properties of a parallelogram to prove that it's a parallelogram. Well, the same is true uh, for these other quadrilaterals. While a rectangle and a square and a rhombus have many, many properties, we don't need to prove all of those properties to prove uh, it is what it is. Uh, we only need to prove certain things. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video today. So let's begin uh, by proving a rectangle, but our quadrilateral is already a parallelogram. So we've already established a parallelogram, and we want to prove that that parallelogram is a rectangle. So we know all the properties of the parallelogram apply. So we might have something like this with uh, one pair of opposite sides, both parallel and congruent. That's a parallelogram. So if the parallelogram has at least one right angle, so we've previously proven it's a parallelogram and it has one right angle, then we know for sure it's a rectangle. A second way to prove something is a rectangle. Again, if it's already a parallelogram and we want to prove it's a rectangle, so we might have uh, something that looks like this. It's already a parallelogram, so let's prove Say it was a parallelogram because both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Now we have this four-sided figure. It's a parallelogram. If the diagonals of the parallelogram are congruent, then it is a rectangle. So if we could get AC all congruent to DB all congruent, our parallelogram now is a rectangle. Now it is possible that we haven't established the four-sided figure, the quadrilateral is not a parallelogram. If, if we don't know if it's a parallelogram, but we have a four-sided figure that has four right angles. So this is all we have, this is all we know, that is a rectangle. And the most common mistake Okay, the error here is to say that it's a square. Okay, we don't know if it's a square because we don't know how long the opposite sides are. Okay, we do know that the opposite sides are going to be congruent. We do know that now, but we don't know that it's a square. Okay, so if we have something with four right angles, a four-sided figure with four right angles, all we know is that that thing is a rectangle. Next special quadrilateral we're going to prove is a rhombus. And again, if our quadrilateral, if we've already established this is a parallelogram, so let's say we've got one, both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, we've got ourselves a parallelogram, and if our parallelogram contains one pair of consecutive sides congruent, so maybe that type of thing, where AB is congruent to BC. So if we can get AB congruent to BC, and it's already a parallelogram, then we know that that will be a rhombus. And then finally, to prove a rhombus, again, we need a parallelogram. If either diagonal bisects two angles of a parallelogram, then it is a rhombus. So first we have a, a parallelogram, so we have both pairs of opposite sides parallel, possibly. And if either diagonal bisects two angles, so something like this, AB is bisecting angle CAD and AB is bisecting CBD we've got ourselves a rhombus. Now, if it's not established that it's a parallelogram, 
if both the diagonals of the quadrilateral are perpendicular bisectors of each other, both diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other, then we have ourselves a rhombus. But we don't know if that's a parallelogram or not. All we know is that it's quadrilateral with the diagonals that are perpendicular bisectors of each other. And then proving a square, a little trickier, we can prove a square a couple different ways. But if the quadrilateral is both a rectangle and a rhombus, then it is a square. So you must find a way to prove a rectangle from above and a rhombus from above. So, for example, you might have a parallelogram with one right angle. So if we have a parallelogram and we have a right angle, well, that's a rectangle. But then if we have two consecutive sides congruent, so we have a parallelogram with two consecutive sides congruent, it's a rhombus. Now it's both a rectangle and a rhombus. It is a square. So if we have both a rectangle and a rhombus, that would imply that figure has to be a square. So there we go, that's a square. And you'll see me, again, you'll see me draw these, all these things will look like squares. So you might get something that looks like, well, like what I just drew. Okay? That's a parallelogram with one right angle and two consecutive sides congruent, so it's a rectangle and a rhombus, so that would be a square. And all then all the properties of a square apply, just like here. If we can prove a rhombus, then all the properties of a rhombus apply. And of course, as you know, a rhombus is a kite. Or if you prove a rectangle, then all the properties of a rectangle will apply after that. Okay? So we can prove a kite if two disjoint pairs of consecutive sides are congruent, then we have ourselves a kite. So if we have a figure that looks just like that and that's the only thing we have, we know we have a kite. Another way to prove a kite, if one of the diagonals of a quadrilateral, again, we don't have a parallelogram or anything, it's just a plain old four-sided figure, quadrilateral, if one of the diagonals is the perpendicular bisector of the other. So one of the diagonals is the perpendicular bisector of the other. So here we have AB is the perpendicular bisector of DC. So if AB, one of the diagonals is the perpendicular bisector of the other diagonal, then we have ourselves a kite. And then finally, we can prove an isosceles trapezoid a couple different ways. Okay, if the non-parallel sides of a trapezoid are congruent, then it's isosceles. So we've got ourselves a trapezoid here. And if the non-parallel sides are congruent, then it's an isosceles trapezoid. So you might see something that looks like this, and I think I did that in a previous video, that is, a, is an isosceles trapezoid. I think I did that when we were trying to, I gave an example of how not to prove a parallelogram. One pair of opposite sides parallel, one pair of opposite sides congruent, that's an isosceles trap. Another way to prove an isosceles trapezoid, okay, we've got parallel sides. If the lower base angles or the upper base angles are congruent. So if we had something like that, or we could have the same diagram, we might have something like that with, without them. So either or, the lower or the upper base angles. And then finally, if we have a trapezoid and the diagonals are congruent, 
than it is isosceles. So if uh, AC was congruent to BD. Wow, and how many times have we proven that these two try these two overlapping triangles are congruent? Okay. Wow, how many times have we proven this triangle congruent to this triangle? Many, many times. Okay. So we get we can easily prove if the diagonals this is the diagonals are congruent, this is going to be an isosceles trapezoid. So, and you'll probably see that again. So there are the ways to prove special quadrilaterals to prove them to be isosceles trapezoids or kites or rhombuses. And as I mentioned previously, I will probably draw everything as a square. So you'll have something that looks like that. And there is a parallelogram with one right angle. That would be a rectangle. Or here is an example. Well, we've seen the example of the isosceles trapezoid. Looks like a square, but it's really not. It's an isosceles trapezoid. So we'll do more of this for practice when I see you in class.